what happened at the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix. So, if you do not know, if you do not know what happened 26 years ago on the weekend of the 29th of April until the 1st of May, then either you're no lot, you're not a motorsports fan, or you are new to racing. So what happened on that day, uh, on those three days, was in Friday, while driving his, uh, a Jordan, which was um, a green car that ha that used to be sponsored by Seven Up and Fuji Film, and the driver driving it was a young Brazilian called Rubens Barrichello, who would later go on to win races for Scuderia Ferrari. He had a horrible crash at, I don't know what corner it was, it may have been Villeneuve corner, and he was unconscious briefly. However, Sid Watkins saved his life and he was able to talk just hours after the accident. And Ayrton Senna, his uh, mentor, went to see him at the hospital to check that he was okay. However, what happened in the next two days were twice as tragic as that. So on the Saturday, um, while qualifying for the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix, I believe in pre-qualifying because they used to have two different sessions back then because there was cars that were really, really slow and new to the championship so they had to do pre-qualifying because there wasn't enough seats for qualifying because I think you got a maximum of 30 cars on the grid but there was 40 odd that had entered so there was a pre-qualifying session and uh, one of the drivers in that in the pre-qualifying session was a Simtech. Uh, Simtech were a new team that joined F1. They weren't very good, and they were run by Nick Worth. And one of their drivers, Roland Ratzenberger, was on. And don't laugh at his name, okay? Because what happened was extremely tragic. Uh, Ratzenberger had previously driven like the touring cars and in Formula Three Thousand and in Le Mans, which is a famous endurance race in France, where they go for 24 hours around the same circuit, with three different drivers usually. And what happened was Ratzenberger had damaged his car earlier on in the lap, and coming into, I don't know what corner it was, uh, the front wing got lodged under the car and he flew into the barriers, and his teammate David Brabham was on a run at the time, and said, um, I saw purple bits all over the track and I knew instantly it was Roland because we were the only car that had purple in our car, on our car. And I came round and saw Roland um, in his state, unconscious, and I was thinking that must be a heavy impact. He's probably not going to make it. And he didn't. Roland Ratzenberger died on the 31st of April at the young age of 33. He'd made his Formula 1 debut two races earlier and only finished once in his Formula 1 career. And that was 11th at the Aida race in Japan in, Pacific, in the Pacific Grand Prix. Brabham got offered to not drive by Nick Worth, who was the team boss. Bernie Ecclestone and FIA president, FIA's people who run F1, Max Mosley. Now, if you don't know who Bernie Eccleston is, he ran the fight, the group that financed F1, so he was technically the boss of Formula One, and he was for 40 odd years until uh, a company called Liberty Media bought F1. But anyway, um, and Brabham said that Roland would have wanted him to race on, so he did. And the 30th seat on the grid was offered to the fastest pre the, the fastest non-qualifier pre-qualifier, but he declined out of respect for Ratzenberger. So, on the Sunday, Ayrton Senna got pole position and led away at the start. However, at the start, there was a massive accident between Michael Schumacher's teammate JJ Leto in the Benetton, which was powered by Ford. Now... If you don't know who Benetton are, you either aren't uh, you either aren't into fashion or you're not into motorsport. As Benetton used to take part in Formula One for 15 years, I believe, and a car a driver called Pedro Lamy hit him right in the back end. Luckily, both drivers were okay. However, the safety car was a ridiculously slow Vec uh, Vo uh, Opel Vectra, I believe, and he and Senna kept holding the safety car to hurry up. And on the restart, which I believe was on lap 5, Senna led from Schumacher. However, 
on lap seven while heading around the Tamborello curve, which was the f I think the first proper corner on the track. Send the steering column field most likely, or the car bottomed out, and he went into the barriers. His wheel, one of his wheels, hit him in the head, and Sid Watkins tried to save him. However, Watkins didn't go with him to the hospital, which was an indication to the likes of Murray Walker and John Watson that he wasn't going to make it. And one of the greatest Formula 1 drivers of all time, Ayrton Senna, died at the young age of 34. Now, BBC's coverage of it was incredibly respectful. Murray Walker was brilliant. But John Watson, I don't believe, was very respectful and he kept shouting in a voice, in the usual voice. But still, he tried his best. And, you know, being in that position is very difficult, is what he said. And, um, Schumacher went on to win the race ahead of Nicola Larini and Mika Hakkinen in the Benetton, the Ferrari and the McLaren. And people remark this, the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix as the worst Formula 1 race weekend of all time. With there being two casualties, which was only one of two weekends where that's happened in the sport, and two serious accidents where one of them was knocked unconscious. So if you guys did enjoy the video, like and subscribe and I will see you all for the next video. More sport is dangerous. And if you don't believe that, then either you're not a motorsport fan or you're new to motorsport. Bye guys.